Hey everybody, Clay Archer, CEO of DPC Technology. Today we're gonna to set up the core of my new home lab, the Unified Dream Machine Pro. We're renovating the office, so for the next 90 days, I'm gonna be working from home. It's the perfect time for me to upgrade my home setup and try some products I don't use on a day-to-day -day basis. As you may know, we're a managed service provider, and we mainly work with small to medium-sized businesses. And while we do use Unify Protect security cameras and Unify wireless access points, we use higher-end firewalls and routers. So this is gonna be my first time using a Unified Dream Machine Pro. I currently use an off-the-shelf Linksys router, so this is gonna be a nice upgrade, as well as giving me a foundation to plug in other Unify products that I can now test at home. All right, so let's start with my current setup. It's really not that overly complicated. I live in a high rise condo. It's not a lot of square footage, so I don't really have any trouble right now with Wi-Fi as it is. I do have quite a few IoT things just like anybody else in 2021. I've got a Nest, I've got an Alexa, I've got a Google Home Max, I've got some lights, et cetera, et cetera. Those things I do want to segment on their own VLAN, which will be a nice to kind of experiment with that. I did when we remodeled here about 10 years ago, hardwire every room in the house. So I do have connectivity with Cat5 to pretty much anything that needs a high throughput connection. So I'm not overly concerned about Wi-Fi throughput, but I do want to take this opportunity to kind of segment out my network and put things on an appropriate VLAN. The main living room is on the other side of this wall and all the TV and speakers and everything come into this closet. So you can see there's some speaker wire in here that it kind of is hanging out the back. Right now, all I'm running in here is you can see a TiVo, the HD Home Run, which runs my Plex server. I've got an over there antenna. This is kind of the spot where it gets the best reception and I can hide that bigger antenna away. Also in this closet, we have the computer, my HDMI, my DVI cable, and some USB cables are running through this wall. I also, at this point on the balcony, have a surf cam. It's an access camera. I'm thinking about putting the G4 PTZ out there. I'm not sure about that yet. I may actually put that at the office when the office is done. So I'm gonna start out pretty simple with this system. My main goal is to get the UDM Pro up, get comfortable with it, create a few VLANs, create some users. I'm gonna add a Synology disk station. I brought my QNAP from the office. Yeah, I know everybody's mad at QNAP right now, but I brought my QNAP from the office. It's going on the system. I'm gonna set up a couple of cameras like I mentioned. I may mess around with the PTZ on the balcony just to see what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna add a G3 Instant and I'm gonna add a G4 Dome. My main goal there too is to have that platform done so that I can test cameras here. As you can tell with my other videos, I go to the office to test. And when I'm testing at night and I have to test over days, Sometimes it's kind of a pain. I go up there on the weekends and it'd be nice to not have to drive into the office to test the camera. I'd like to have a platform here where I can test them both indoors and outside on the on the balcony. It's pretty nasty out there as far as testing stuff for weatherproofing. Things get beat up pretty quickly out in that environment. And if it can survive out there, it pretty much can survive anywhere. At this point, I'm not going to run any extra switching in here. I am just gonna run PoE with injectors for the two apps and a couple of cameras at this point. Um, I just have the injectors sitting around and might as well use them. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just install everything and then I'll kind of give you guys an after. Without any further ado, I'm gonna jump in and start getting uh, the equipment installed. Okay, as you can see, I've swapped out the uh, Linksys for the UDM Pro. I still have quite a bit of cable management to do up there, but it is up in the closet and, and ready to go. And you can see on my screen now, it has seen the UDM Pro. Uh, and obviously it's having a little trouble connecting to my cable modem. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start troubleshooting that, figure out why we're not connected. I'm gonna go into advanced internet options here, click on DHCP, that's correct. And interfaces WAN, that's correct. And I'm gonna apply that. I'm gonna go ahead and also restart the cable modem real quick just to see if that doesn't pop the connectivity. And now we have the internet connected, wonderful. Just need a reset of the modem. So kind of did all that at once. I'm gonna go ahead and click next here and device name. I'll go ahead and leave it as that. I'm gonna agree to the term service. Uh, I'm actually gonna create an account. I do have a Unify uh, account, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. Leave the update schedule on. I know some people turn that on and off. I'll go back and change the settings if I don't want them later. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them at default. Auto optimize. I'm gonna leave that on as default. Starting speed tests. Looking pretty good on my downloads. I'm looking all right on my uploads. I had a feeling that was what it was gonna look like. There we go, 22, 22 down, 13 up. Go ahead and keep those settings, not change those. It sounds about right. Setting up my device and boom, I'm up. That was pretty awesome. I'm gonna give that five stars and submit that because that was really 
pretty simple. All right, so let's dive right into it. I've logged into my account here. I'm gonna go into settings real quick and I do have an update available. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the update up to firmware V1.9.3. All right, so as you can see, we've updated the device now. We are on the latest version. Really quickly on this general tab, you can see basic information of the uh, device. You can see actually it just auto detected that I plugged in the WAP that I'm going to use. So anyways, really quickly, CPU load, CPU temp, memory. Uh, you've probably seen this in other reviews. A really simple kind of general page. You can set your updates. Uh, you can also here start protect, start access, start talk. I'm going to start protect because I am going to load some cameras. So we'll go ahead and get that going. And also, um, I'm going to turn on auto updates for all the other programs too. I typically don't do that, but this is kind of a lab and I, I'm okay with it just kind of if it blows it up, I, I'm fine. I'll just reload. This isn't a super important machine to me. I'm in the Reddit and Facebook forums. I see those updates. So yeah, we'll just let them roll. I'm cool with that. Uh, I'm not going to set up access or set up talk. I'm not going to use either of those here on this machine. So I'll go ahead and leave that for another time. Um, and here you can set up a few of the other things on. I'm going to leave everything in default for now. Play with that as part of my testing. So we'll go ahead and go back into here. And now you see on your main, uh, your main page, you could log into protect or the UDM network itself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the UAP AC light and click add, show you how quickly that is to add and adding one device. Boom. It just added it pretty freaking easy. I will say just really quickly, this has been incredibly easy to set up and configure. I automatically found my TiVo, my home run, uh, pretty much everything. Just really found everything quite quickly for a kind of prosumer device. I, you know, I'm going to give it a really, really high mark. It just, you know, finds everything. I'm slowly plugging stuff into it um, as I'm kind of putting the network together, but it, it immediately found my computer and and the other things. Oh, cool. It's also finding some other things that are trying to connect to that wireless device. I'm not going to go too deep into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play with it a little bit more. I wanted to go over that basic update. I will kind of do a follow-up, kind of just all the things that I've noticed about it that I thought was cool, and a some final thoughts on what I think about the device itself. All right, so it's about a week later and I've been playing with the Dream Machine pretty much all week, getting a little deeper into it. And uh, I'm really happy to report it's just a super easy machine to use. I was going to do a little deeper dive maybe into setting up the access points or VLANs or the threat management. But quite frankly, it's so easy. You just kind of go through the wizards. It's got the power of a, of a professional device, but it really truly is more of a consumer device. I'm going to go through really quickly the things I liked about it. There are a couple things I don't like about it. The things that I don't like about it are small and maybe a little bit nitpicky, especially at the price. But number one is going to be that the eight ports are not PoE. So if the switch was PoE, I think this would be a little bit more powerful device. Like I said earlier, I used injectors. I've got a lot of injectors lying around, but it's going to be nice and cleaner. Uh, I will probably add a PoE switch here. And it would be nice if the machine just had it built in. I think the average consumer would probably benefit from having the ability just to seamlessly add PoE devices. The other thing is it's not quite silent. And actually it's not, not even close to quite silent. It isn't any louder per se than my PC that's in this closet. I've got a Threadripper PC. It's a nice PC, but it does make a bit of noise. And it's probably about the same volume level, maybe a little less, but I do notice that it's there. It's not a deal breaker. It's not a loud machine but it is definitely not a silent machine. So take that into consideration if you're replacing like a silent Linksys like I was, this is not going to be a silent device. But that's really it for my cons on this device. I mean, the, it's a really, really strong unit. Things that I like about it. Number one, the 10 gigabit per second uh, WAN and LAN ports, really super nice to have those two ports. Couple that with the fact that it can do 3.5 gigabit per second with IDS and IPS. That's a real game changer. Um, the ability to completely turn on that stuff is the, the reason that we typically go to our pro level devices. So you're bringing those, that pro level feature to a consumer level device. It's a really, really nice feature. And obviously that's being driven by the fact that it has a pretty strong processor. I kind of leaned on Unify a little bit in the past that they kind of underdo the processors. With this machine, I really think they matched the performance that they needed with the processor that they included with this device. So that's really awesome. Another thing I really like about the Dream Machine is the build quality. It's really built well. I like the fact that it's rack mountable. The screen on the front is really nice. If you're installing it somewhere headless, like a server closet or something, and you just need to know some basic information on it, it's nice to have that right there without having to walk back to a machine to kind of log into it and see some stuff. So I really do like that screen. I know it's a little bit of a novelty, but I, I think it's really functional as well. The other thing that's really great about this device is in one single one U rack mount unit, you're able to get 
a video surveillance system with the protect, access control, VoIP, not that I'm gonna use the access control or VoIP, but it is included in the device, prosumer level firewall, and you get a network controller all in one device. I think that's really pretty amazing. And I think all of those devices, although I haven't tested the access control and the VoIP system, the things that I have tested on it with the protect and the controller and the router, I think they're really nice. I think they're really well done. A user interface is great. Reporting is really, really nice. That's one of the things I was really impressed with just playing over the week was the amount of information that I can get from it. I can really, really easily dive into, you know, what's using a bandwidth, what devices are using bandwidth. I could segment things. It's really, really quick and easy to understand what's happening on your network, which I think is wonderful. And actually, I think it's better than a lot of the pro level uh, devices out there. You know, SonicWall is a, a firewall we use all the time. And the reports that I'm getting out of this prosumer level device, I mean, they, it really kills the, the sonic wall that I'm really familiar with. So that being said, the biggest pro for me is just the price. At 379, I think it may be more than the average person needs, but if you are looking for something that will do surveillance, control a bunch of controllers in one spot, and you need some higher end uh, routing and threat protection, I think this is a really, really nice device. It's got a high throughput. It's able to do the higher end threat protection and detection stuff in real time without slowing down your bandwidth. I think it's a really nice device. And for 379, I'm really stoked to have this as part of my new home lab. You know, for me personally, the ability now just to throw on protect items um, at home and test them at home, throw in WAPs and those kind of things and test them. It's really nice because I, I, as I said before, I have to drive 20 miles into work to kind of test these things, especially if I'm testing something overnight. So I'm really stoked to be able to do that here. I've got a lot more testing I want to do with the device, but I, at this point, I'm really, really happy with it. I did see some people had some configuration issues or um, some errors. I had nothing of the sort. The only issue I had whatsoever is my version one Amazon Echo. I just won't reset and connect to the network, but I think that's something wrong with my Amazon Echo. I will be over the next few months just kind of adding more stuff to the network, playing with it. And if anything is uh, deems worthy of a video, I'll post it up there. But uh, with that, I'm gonna just end this with two thumbs up. If this is the kind of content you like, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or anything you want me to test out, please leave them down in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next video.